CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget, reducing the attack surface of your Juniper SRX. You know, we often think about the SRX and other security appliances as being the defender of our networks, both small and large. But it's also important to protect the protector and to make sure that the administrative users that are logging into the SRX to protect our network aren't the low-hanging fruit or the weakest link in our security policy. So I'm going to show you some steps to harden that SRX, specifically from the standpoint of your administrative users. Now, it goes without saying we have to have good physical security, okay? Now, assuming we have that, one thing we want to do is we don't want to log in as the root user unless absolutely necessary. I'm going to always log in as a super user, in this case, M. Shannon. Also, if I do a show config here, you want to make sure that you have some type of role-based access control user policy for all of the administrative users that are going to log into this SRX. So you might want to create your own classes. You might want to have users with different role-based distinctives, like they're part of the read-only class or the operator class or the super user class. I showed you how to set this up in another micro nugget. I also show you this in my JNCIA and my JNCIS security series. You might want to also consider putting these individual users in their own management zone or their own VLAN. What that means is you've got a special zone on this SRX and you're going to apply an interface or interfaces to that zone for those admin users. Now it's quite possible in your organization that Jeremy and Keith and here's M. Shannon, they might be using a host that's a member of the trusted zone and this management or admin zone. If they can actually log on from different machines in different zones, one as a normal user and one as a management user, that's kind of a best case scenario. Otherwise, if they're logging in as normal users and management users to do all of their tasks, it's going to make your security policy a little bit more tricky, especially as it goes from this admin zone to the trust zone or the DMZ zone and your untrust zone. So I'll do a control C here and get into configuration mode. And let's go up to, let's clear the screen real quick. So we're going to set the security and we'll create a zone. And this security zone will be called admin. I'm going to use all caps because it's user defined. And then one of the first things you want to do is you want to set what's called our host inbound traffic, or this is control plane traffic that's destined from the management users or the admin users to this SRX for management purposes. So we're going to be doing some hardening and reducing the attack surface. Now realize that I can set this host inbound traffic setting for the zone itself or I could do it on an interface by interface basis. You would do it for the zone itself if you're going to have more than one interface assigned to this zone. Okay? If there's only one interface on the SRX that is ba basically handling the admin traffic, then you could do it on the interface basis. Then the next thing is what system services are we going to allow? And you can see what you really want to do here is you want to only allow as far as host inbound traffic goes, secure services. So I only want to allow HTTPS, NTP version 3, ping is pretty much a necessity, SNMP version 3, secure shell over telnet, and probably only allow HTTPS, not HTTP. So what you would do in here is you would just go ahead and list those services and really the secure services that you want to allow. So I'm going to allow HTTPS, up arrow, got to have ping, up arrow, I need SNMP, I can handle that security separately, and then secure shell for sure over Telnet. Okay, So these are the only services that the admin users in this zone are going to be able to send to interfaces or the loopback interface on this SRX. So that's reducing the attack surface. Now we're also going to create inner zone policies. Next let me go ahead and add this security zone called admin. And we're going to say it's interface fast 007 on this SRX. Now, we want to create inner zone policies between this admin zone and the other zones that are being serviced on this SRX. The trust zone, is there a DMZ, for example? Do we have to get access to servers in the DMZ to upload content or to administer those servers? What about the untrust zone? So you need to be aware of the applications and services that can be used enter zone by default. So I could do a run show configuration and we could say groups and then the Junos defaults applications. 
So these are all the applications and services. So what applications and services are we going to allow enter zone between this admin zone where our managers are, our penetration testers, our auditors, and the other zones that our SRX is servicing? And so we just start out with application Junos and then think about the services that we need to, to use, enter zone, do a control C. Once you've determined that, you can now edit your security policies and you say from zone, the from zone is going to be admin, and the to zone is whatever. Is it the DMZ zone, if you created it? Is it the untrust zone, which is the outside internet? Did you rename that to internet, for example? Or what about the internal trust zone? Okay, so your inter zone policy. Then you need to set a policy. So we're going to say we're going to set a policy. And we're going to call this, let's say, this is user defined, so I'm going to use all capital letters, okay? Management access. And then we want to match the source, source address. Now we could say any, or a better case scenario is create an address book entry that represents just the subnetwork or the hosts in that admin zone. That would be a better solution. I show you how to create address books in my JNCIS security series. At this point, we'll just say any. Okay, then the destination address is going to be either any or an address book entry or address set for addresses or subnets in the destination zone, which in our case is the trust zone. Okay, so we'll say any for now. Then what application? And this is where we see that list from earlier, right? Junos dash whatever. You would go ahead and only permit those applications and services that you want to allow by creating multiple entries. A implicit deny will kick in at the end of the policy. Or you could do an application set, which is a modular predetermined group of applications. It's reusable and you could create that ahead of time and you could invoke that application set here. I show you how to do that in my JNCIS series. So these are the key aspects of hardening our SRX. Let me show you kind of a quick list here. Okay, so just to wrap up here, don't log in as root unless necessary. Create an RBAC policy of users with least privilege concepts, operator, read only, super user. Put admins in their own zone, which associates to a management VLAN if possible. Keep in mind they could be logging in from within the trust zone and this admin zone as well with different workstations. Configure the host inbound traffic settings with strict settings only allowing secure services like Secure Shell and HTTPS. This can be done on the interface basis or on the zone itself, in our case the admin zone. Then create inter-zone policies from your management zone, whatever you've named it, to all the other zones on your SRX. Consider hiding the admin host IP addresses with NAT. And in my JNCIS security series, I'll show you how to maximize the screen feature on the SRX for TCP and UDP denial of service flood countermeasures. I'm Michael James Shannon, CBT Nuggets instructor. I hope this micro nugget was informative for you. I want to thank you for viewing.